Hey, I'm Tim from Thunder Ridge Bison. Today we're gonna head over to Harrington's Butchers to film another video for our Farm to Table series. Come along for the ride. This is Thunder Ridge. Okay, so now we're going to move along to the hind quarter here. Uh, we're going to start with the loin section here, the piece that everybody's after. So we are going to give you several different options here. And uh, like I said before, it may not be the way everybody else wants it, but we're going to cut this today for what the demand is in, in Brian's market. So we're going to start by cutting the flank right off. And we, do, we get a lot of requests for flanks and skirt steaks. But two totally different things, right? Uh, yes, they are. Kind of similar. Yeah, yeah thanks, Chair. They're kind of similar location, but they are, they're a little bit different. They're equally thin. You have to be careful of the greens and such on them. Like that, beautiful, thank you. So there's two ribs left on the loin. There, so now we've got the flank right there. So for this one in particular, I'm gonna remove the top butt from the short loin. And again, that, like, that darkness is just the aging, right? That's all good. Exactly good right. aging, but. Exactly right, and it's kind of hard to see here, but there's a bone right there. So I went around this bone and in between these two vertebrae, and I know that that's the spot right there between the two vertebrae. There, so we're just gonna snap that off the corner of the table. And as you can see here, you've got your beautiful porterhouse-like style T-bone steaks, which is one of the, the, the most famous pieces that everybody recognizes, everybody loves a good T-bone. So we're going to cut those up, like I said before, at a good inch, because even if you like it well done, it should still be juicy. One of the things about bison being so lean, it's not, hard to dry. not hard to dry it out. So uh, I think that's one of the things that might scare people from it a little bit is, yeah. is the worry about improper cut, uh, cooking. And again, that's why I was, you know, I like leaning on you guys. I I didn't always know all that stuff, so the, you know, as you're years into it now, now you start to learn a little bit more, but I, you're right, I think that's what people are scared of. Spending the money and ruining a good kind of meat, exactly. So as you can kind of see as we work our way down the loin, the tenderloin side of the T-bone starts out really big with like a porterhouse side. This side being the strip and that side being the tenderloin. As you work your way down cutting steaks, the T-bone starts to get a little bit smaller on the fillet side and smaller and smaller until it pretty much becomes a bone-in strip loin or in some places they call that a wing steak or a club steak. So we're gonna. To take that's pretty much exactly <laughs> what it is. That's right. So is the porterhouse just the big side of the T-bone? Yeah. Is that all the difference is between a T-bone steak and a porterhouse it's steak? The little uh, yeah. the pin bone muscle. So yes. it's hard to see here, but we'll remove some of this bone dust that we were talking about. So in the first ones that we started to cut off, with a really big tenderloin on them, they have this separate little muscle on the side right here. You can kind of see it right there. That's a pin bone muscle. When at is present, see it's really big on this one, starts to be a little smaller. Then as you go down there, it's pretty much gone on this one. Those would technically be classified as a porterhouse. And now these ones where it doesn't exist would be a T-bone. But I think that you're walking a fine line of labeling there. And it, 
To be honest, to be honest with you, it's, it's a great steak either way, no matter what, eh? So there, Jeremy's got the uh, flank steak pulled out of the flank. Really nice piece, really popular, but as you can see, it's very heavily grained. So the secret to this being a good steak or a great steak is how it's sliced afterwards. Just slice it nicely against the grain. I love it with a good marinade on it. We do ours with a three peppercorn marinade, but I love a chimichurri or something on that. It's yeah. really, really good. And like we said earlier, the big gorgeous looking T-bone steaks. That's amazing. So we got the rest of this little bit of short loin here. So we're just going to pull the little bit of the tenderloin that's left in here right out. Just a nice little piece there. I'm going to set this up. And as I was explaining earlier, when you're chiming something, you've got the vertebrae and then you've got the back of the bone. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it right here and separate the two so that this can stay on and this can come off. We'll try that and you're done. Beautiful. Awesome. Now Jerry's got that perfectly chimed up there. We're just going to take off the outside edge there, just remove that undesirable a little bit. Oops. So there's the two ribs that we cut off the bottom there earlier. So we just pull those two ribs off there. Let's move our top butt out of the way. We've got some other uh, smaller ribs up, other bones up here too. And then you end up with these little button bones on here. You see they look just like little buttons. So we're just gonna dig those little suckers out too. We'll scoop these last two ribs off. Now when I'm cutting steak for myself, I try to leave a fair amount of fat on it. I love it when this when this gets all charred up and crisped up and it's really, really good. Now between the two, and especially on the strip loin, you've got this piece right down the back. It kind of looks like fat, but you can literally tow a car with that stuff. So that's just gone. Once again, Nice, decent one inch thickness or better. There's some gorgeous looking little, little strip loin steaks. Even if you guys are butchering yourselves at home, it's extremely important to make steaks, not miss steaks, right, Jerem? That's right. <laughs> we don't need any doorstops or wedgies. No. So, for summer steaks. Or summer steaks. That's right. Summer inch and summer three quarters. That's right. So nice even cut all the way across to the table and back. And you end up with a little face piece like this and we faced off a bit of the darker stuff there, which will be good and trim. And there we've got all our beautiful looking little strip loin steaks. Awesome. Now we're left with our top butt. So we had somebody in on the weekend asking about the picanha. Is this where that exactly. picanha comes from? It's right in this wheelhouse right here, Brian. It's exactly right. So as you can see, this kind of represents a T-bone starting to get a little bit more uh, separated into different muscles. And there's a big giant bone here as well as right here. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop out this end of the tenderloin. This is known as the butt tender, which is the larger end of the tenderloin. Before I do that, I'm going to put a bit of an edge back on that knife. So we're just going to follow the seam. 
right beside the top butt and the bone right there. And pull that piece out nice and whole just like that. So that looks beautiful here, looks nice here. A little bit of undesirable on the outside. I'm going to fire that over to Jared. He's going to make that look gorgeous. So in a lot of places, especially uh, slaughterhouse style, uh, Jeremy and I were talking about this earlier, a lot, of, a lot of places where they cut beef all day long, time is money, and they just turn on the saw and they just crank everything right, so, right through. So they would leave that top butt on there and just cut this big giant steak. So you've got a sirloin, top sirloin steak, big piece of tenderloin in the middle of it, and a big chunk of bone. It's just not pretty. It just doesn't look good. Plus, one steak's enough for probably four or five people. Yeah, a lot of people cut them two, three, all the time. Exactly. So we've got so this. You also have a different dining experience in one steak, wouldn't you? Yeah, a hundred percent. You 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 can go from Burger King to the keg in about two seconds yeah. flat. So we're going to separate all the major muscles here. So we've got our bottom sirloin, our tri, which is known as the tri-tip. We've got our picanha, which is our it's all these major muscles in here. We're going to separate them to get our best dollar value out of of the things that people are after. As much as people sometimes like to buy a strip loin or a tenderloin and take it home and, and butcher it themselves, this is not exactly the type of piece that uh, is readily available or people could get. Top sirloin for me is probably my best selling roast. I will actually take the top sirloin. I'll clean it up a little bit and make a couple really nice roasts out of it. And we, we make them at the, at the store too. Yeah, Just top sirloin. Excellent, awesome. They are next to a prime rib, probably one of probably the best yeah. roasts in there, yeah. That's a solid piece of meat, no bone. Exactly, good and lean, so once yeah. again, wouldn't really want to overcook that. So I'm just finding these seams and following my way through here, separating all the muscles. So there's your tri-tip, bottom sirloin. This little seam right here, this is the top sirloin. This is gonna remove the picanha. So there, we're just gonna take off some of that stuff has got a bit of gland in it. A bit of this stuff here, not the fat, especially the picanha. You do not want to remove any of the fat. So we're gonna grab some of that silver skin off of there, right there like that. And what they particularly do with the picanha, you can cook it whole, uh, put lots and lots of salt on the outside on the fat because everything's better with salt. So the grain's running this way, so we're going to slice it probably right around the three-quarter, one-inch mark. Make sure the fat's nice and even. And then we've got some nice sticks here like this. That's traditionally, uh, I believe the, the nature of it is Brazilian. Yeah, South American. Yeah. South, South, yeah, South American in general. And then they cut a picanha. Just like that. A little bit of trim. So we're left with the major piece right in the middle. That's our top butt. So for variety's sake today, I'm just gonna face this a little bit. I am going to go right down beside this muscle right here. I'm going to pull out a nice bit of that silver skin. I'll slice this right in half. That makes a gorgeous aforementioned roast. That would be what they would call a baseball steak. Something like that. Nice top sirloin steak. I like cutting it like this. It gets more of a really nice portion sized uh, plate a plate presentation steak. It looks better on your plate. Once again, you're going for eye appeal. Is eye appeal? Buy appeal. There you go. Kanye on top sirloin. Just using for stew, yeah, 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 exactly. 
So we'll just put a few more uh, ropes on the string on the uh, roast here. Once again, so that the consumer knows what they've got. Strings automatically means it's a roast and that's how they're going to cut it. And again, that dark kind of on that outside, it's all still okay because it's that's yeah. your aging. That's what you wanted, right? Awesome point, Brian. It's exactly right. That's just like an apple. You take a bite and it starts to turn a different shade on the outside. It's just oxidization. When people get a little bit upset by that. They shouldn't. It turns a lot darker when you cook it. Just trim up a bit more trim. Make sure we don't waste anything on this. Stew. Beautiful. Perfect. So now Jeremy, Jeremy's got a bit of a gorgeous looking stew out of the, the bottom sirloin. Summertime, awesome kebab meat. Probably one of my top favorites. Um, with the bison, nothing crazy to spice it. I wouldn't use a whole lot more, maybe a little olive oil to make stuff stick and a bit of salt and pepper and that's about it. Grills up amazing, really, really nice. So that would make a great kebab as well. Okay, so that's the end of the loin section. We're gonna go to the hip section now. Hey guys, thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe to follow along with the rest of our farm journey. And check out the link below to see the rest of the Farm to Table series.